Hey, my name is Chuck Fresh, and I'm broadcasting from up here in outer space, and the internet connectivity up here is just terrible. It's terrible. It's very slow. So I may want to talk to my ISP provider about this. I think Elon Musk is going to put some satellites up here, so hopefully we'll have uh, better connectivity up here on the Death Star before they blow it up. Uh, anyway, I wanted to do, a, I'm not sitting, I'm actually in my home, in my home studio with a piece of green cloth behind me. Now, isn't that the coolest thing? Before I show you the green, let me show you what I can do with this thing. Look at that. I'm an ESL teacher, an online ESL teacher, and uh, I want to make it look legit, like I'm really in a classroom when I teach my kids, five, six-year-olds and their parents. I have my lighting off today. I apologize. <laughs> it doesn't normally look this terrible. I used to have studio lights on, but I'm just showing you the uh, functionality. Because I promised I'd do a video on Minicam. And that's what this is, a video on Minicam. So this, I have my lights off and I'm bunch. This is the worst case scenario. And even in that situation, it looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? So uh, Minicam. Chuck Fresh online ESL teacher. This is using Minicam in your classroom, or you could use this at meetings, or uh, just to record your own YouTube videos if you want to. But um, I work for a company called VIP Kid, and uh, this is my introduction slide. And this is phenomenal. Kids come on, and their parents see this, and they're like, "Holy goodness, man! What are you doing? You're like the king of the world. I'm like the coolest guy in the neighborhood." And I have a ton of super positive reviews over a thousand I've never got dinged once and I just started using this a couple of months ago so uh, but this has uh, helped my classrooms tremendously because people believe in if you look like you're a teacher sitting in a classroom setting like this it adds legitimacy to what you're doing they believe in you and they want to follow you and they want to book your classes and you end up being successful I should turn my lights on. I don't like to bother. Um, let's go back to the Death Star. I like that one better anyway. Um, I'll give you a couple of tips. Tip number one, I'll just throw off the cuff. A dark background is going to hide more of the artifacts because you're always going to see this little green stuff around you depending on your lighting. Um, unless you have professional studio quality lighting, which I don't. I'm in my dining room as a matter of fact. I'm going to show you right now. I am in my dining room and I have this thing behind me. All right, let me show you actually what I'm shooting in front of. So turn the chroma key off, and that's it. I'm shooting with this green thing that I bought on Amazon for about 50 bucks, including the stand. Um, I think it's gone up a little bit. So I could buy a whole set now for like 100 I got it on sale several years ago. That's it. It's just a green piece of cloth. And with the right lighting on it, and there are a million videos that will show you how to light a background in the green screen. That's not what this is about. But look those up definitely. It'll give you some uh, really cool tips and tricks to leveling out the background so you don't have the shadow down here and all these little folds and stuff. i got to get some more clips and pull it a little bit tighter. But when I have my lighting on, my overhead lighting, it looks phenomenal at 4 in the morning when there's no outside light coming in. So turn it back on. Boom magic come back in the Death Star or in my classroom if I want to do that. This is Minicam 6.3.2. Um, I didn't really like Minicam a while ago. There were a couple of uh, versions before this and my CPU usage was very very high and frankly I thought it looked like it didn't look great but this new release whenever 6.3.2 came out just it appears to have resolved a lot of those problems and you're looking at it now it looks terrific now, that's not just the power of the chroma key isn't just the, the the one thing it's just the one thing that gives you this ability and if you use nothing else but the chroma key to change out your background there's other ways to do this too but i haven't figured it all out yet. i've only had this for a month or two but if you can achieve this then it's well worth whatever price you paid for it i believe i'm i was on the 49 dollar a year for the second highest version and then I upgraded that to a lifetime because uh, I just think of so many different things, so many different applications I can use this particular software, this Minicam software with. I am an affiliate. My link is below, so I want to disclose that. And uh, I wouldn't sell anything I don't believe in. If you know me, that's what I do. And you do see this little artifact. Again, if your light's correct and your chroma is set correctly, you don't see hardly any of that. But again, no one's going to care. These are my audience is six, seven year old kids for the most part. They don't care that there's a little green thing. They actually think it's kind of cool that I'm glowing. And um, 
So, all right, let me run through this. So you can do a, diff a bunch of different things. I'm on the medium plan. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but I'll show you what I have down here. Whatever I have, I have 12 presets. Right now, as you can see on the screen, I have three of them set up. I reset it once in a while because I get too much junk in there. And uh, we'll talk about that on a subsequent video. For, for the most part, it's been pretty solid. It's crashed on me twice in the middle of a class. It just kind of poofed out. And I had to switch back to my Logitech. Uh, once I did that, the second time I just restarted Manicam and it came right back up to where I was. I don't know why it happened, but it didn't blue screen my system, it just closed the webcam software. So, as opposed to the Logitech webcam software on Windows 7, it actually blue screens once in a while because they haven't updated it in a while because Windows 7 is about 10 years old and there's no money in updating old software. So, um, to show you, this is what I come into a classroom, I open my camera immediately, they can hear me talking. But this is the screen they see. And all these stars and the mouse and the Mickey Mouse and the Meg are all downloadable for free on the ManyCam website. And that's just phenomenal. You can get all this stuff for free. Now the licensing, if you're doing it for education, you can probably get away with fair use. But if you're selling commercial products and you want to throw Mickey Mouse in there, you're going to have to talk to the lawyers at Disney and they could run into some problems with that. So you probably want to avoid that. <laughs> or you don't. I don't know. Right, a couple of things here. There's something called lower third, and that gives you like the uh, the newscast kind of thing, like this thing. But it's huge. It's huge, and it's inflexible. So I can't. I'm like looking, trying to look over it. Uh, inflexible. I'm not a big fan on it. I think they need to work on that a little bit. You can turn it on and off, as I did here. But there's another way to put text on the screen. You go through the draw function. And this is the one I've been using. Just click text on, and voila, you've got stuff on the bottom. I put teacher Mickey. You can't see that that well, so what I'll do is, and then you can move this anywhere on the screen too, so that's phenomenal. It gives it a little bit of a frosted background too to differentiate it. And what I do is I change it to white depending on the background I'm on, and then I'll change the font size. And even the font to make it look really good. And then you can move this anywhere. You can center it. You can add more to it. And that's what I've done with this VIP kid thing when we show this here. And class will begin soon. So if you're sitting in a um, ESL classroom and you're there, the teachers are sitting in the classroom usually up to a couple of minutes before the class starts. The parents know you're there, they get notifications, something pops up on their screen, say, hey, the teacher's in the classroom. So you have the kids saying, teacher, can we start? And I'd love to start early. However, classes are 25 to 28 minutes. If you start early, you cover all the material and you're not allowed to leave the class early. If you leave the class early, you can get penalized, you can get bad feedback, so catch 22. I'd love to start early, but that means you're going to finish early and then you got to hang out. And in an ESL situation, especially with lower level kids, um, conversation is very awkward because they're very limited in their vocabulary. And most Americans like myself don't know Mandarin or Chinese or uh, Putangwa, I believe it's called. So you just run into that wall, you're staring at each other. So what is your name? How are you? And you're really limited in what you can say in the lower levels. Now, on the higher levels, you can engage in some serious conversation because they've probably taken classes at their school. Most Chinese kids learn English in their, um, in their regular schools. So they are very, very conversational on the higher levels. But on the lower levels, like I'm doing, um, not so much. So I put this, this banner up here, and they watch it for a while, and they stare at the mouse jumping up and down, and they look at the stars and all this stuff. and um, it kind of alleviates that problem, so that's nice, a nice little thing to have. And then I fade out and go into this classroom, or for the boys, some of the boys who are in the space stuff, I'll do this. And um, basically, you can download whatever background you want. And that's all through the, I'll give you a brief introduction to the chroma key. I'll go into these things in detail in future videos, but I just want to give you an overview of the power of this ManyCam software, 632. So this is the chroma key. And you just tap on this guy, and uh, chroma key off, chroma key on. Basically, what you do when you turn it on, I'll start a new one here. I'm going to select my source, and this is what you get. So this is what you're starting. You get your webcam and whatever's behind you. This is the real deal. So you turn chroma key on, and you say, all right, well, what color do you want me to cut out? And you can use chroma blue. You can use white. 
Uh, you could use red if you had a red background, but just know whatever color you cut out in the back, it's going to cut out from the front too. So say you cut out red and you have a red shirt on, well, you're going to be invisible and that's going to be really awkward. I think I could show that to you. So look at this and I make black. So now all you see is my head. And uh, so I've got a lie, you would never do this, but now all you have is my head bouncing around and that's really freaking awkward and my hair is kind of like in my eyes too. There's a really weird thing going on in my eyes. So, so turn it off and you reset it here and uh, pick basically whatever color you want. You click it a couple of times and it's really easy. It's not as difficult as some of the old Chroma key software I've used. That's it. Now I have nothing in my background. Now I want to pick a background. I go to background here. And they give you a couple of presets, which are, you know, psychedelic. Kind of not useful if you want to sit on a magic carpet. That's kind of weird, too. And what I've done is I've downloaded some classrooms just off the Internet. Again, you can use a lot of these fair use. And you can put basically whatever you want behind you. And now you're sitting in a forest somewhere in Kenya with a bunch of elephants about to run you over. I mean, how cool is that? And that's what differentiates you from your other run-of-the-mill teacher who has some kind of map of Texas behind you, and, um, which isn't really teaching them much about anything. You want to teach them about global culture, but the primary thing is language. You want to get things behind you on your background that you can discuss. Number one, things you can discuss. So you can change your background in the middle of a class. And number two, you want to add legitimacy to you. I'm sitting in a classroom now. I look like a bona fide teacher. So that's kind of your, your angle here. And again, you want to get higher rankings and more people to follow you. And then you can ask your ESL employer for a big fat raise. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'm hearing how that's working out. But um, this gives you the, the power to do all that stuff. Now, this was a different classroom. I went into Photoshop and I added their logo back there. And I did some typing on the screen. So I kind of customized this. But you can see the, the incredible power that this software gives you. I'm going to go back and talk about a couple of the effects you have. Um, a lot of people talk about rewards. And um, a lot of these ESL companies, especially the newer ones, are, you must have manual supplemental rewards and you must have props and you must have all this, that, and the other thing, which are... I agree with it to a point because sometimes props do help illustrate things. Sometimes, however, I believe that they distract from the lesson plan. And forced props will, in most cases, distract from the lesson plan. If you're forcing me to show you something two or three times in a lesson that doesn't have anything to do with a lesson, there's some things that just can't be explained with props, some certain words, some terms, some phrases. And uh, if you're forcing me to use a prop during those particular classes, then you're um, defeating your own purpose. So. But in some of them, you have the supplemental rewards, which are really cool. And um, the mini cam software comes, uh, I don't know if this is built in or you had to download it, but you have a bunch of stars. And in a lot of the ESL companies, they give you trophies or stars, and you can download and use either of these. There's a dancing star. Uh, and again, every time they get a star or a trophy in their software, you give them one of these, so you can display their awards, which is very, very cool. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So I used to use adhesive stickers, but I was going through a bunch of those and they would fall off and my dog would eat them. And I just didn't want my dog to die eating these sparkly adhesive stars. So you can't stay away from them. It must be really delicious, although I haven't tried one. But um, and I had that. I had all kinds of other stuff too. I had, uh, I used to put wigs on for certain things to do. Long hair, that's one of the terms. Um, we talk about cats, so I can turn into a cat. Um, when I do the word with the letter D, I end up putting a dog mask on. So now I look like a dog. Oh, just a little tip here. If you blink when you have these masks on, they don't fit right. These things follow your eyes. So if you blink a couple of times, sometimes it straightens itself out. So I can be a dog, a talking dog, which is cool. Kids get a kick out of that. Um, I can put bug eyes in if I want to do that, if we're talking about eyes or I see or look or something. I mean, really unlimited to what you can do here. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. There's like Hello Kitty for girls. There's ice cream. Actually, it looks really good. And there's this hot dog effect, which is, you can actually smell it. Can you see that? No, you can't smell it, but it looks like you smell it. And then, uh, so you have those for your supplemental rewards. You can have stuff that's related to the program. I have a Meg, so sometimes I act like a Meg. And people get a kick out of it. I made this one myself, with the, obviously, with the fake uh, 
mouth on it. So that's pretty cool. And then um, you have all these other things you can give them these supplemental rewards. Like you can have a mouse that I have on my screen, on my uh, on my weight screen. And then they have this mummy. There's, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how deep this thing goes. And there's thousands of them that you can download for free once you purchase the software. Now, Frank, I think you can download them for free even if you're using the trial version. So that's the basic overview of ManyCam. And we'll go into each of these things in some more depth as we go a little further along. I'm still experimenting with the audio track. So apparently you can play audio behind this, although I have not been able to get it to work yet. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. If you can't hear it, I'm having the same problem too. So you have to add another sound card in here. And apparently you can add music behind you and play that while you're waiting too. So that's the next thing I want to work on. And when I figure out how to do that, I will share this on this channel too. Chuck Fresh uh, on the ESL channel. And thanks for watching. If you have tips, tricks, comments, leave them below. And again, my affiliate link is down here below for the Minicam software. If you buy Minicam through my link, I get a little kickback and I can make more videos for you. I'll be incentivized to make more videos. So thanks for watching and uh, have fun teaching.